Number 10. Guys, so in the ultimate irony, probably the <laughs> craziest irony I've ever seen in my life, on a day where you know people are supposed to be mourning the death of George Floyd, right? It's the anniversary, the one-year anniversary of that event. Um, you know, they're flying the Black Lives Matter flag half staff at embassies, US embassies, flying the Black Lives Matter flag half staff at the Biden administration signal support support for this movement okay because police are the worst things that black people have to worry about or the very least that's what they tell you but it seems like on a day like this you can't even mourn the death of george floyd at george floyd square without some fools down the street in a shootout all right guys so yeah that was crazy right that is crazy and like i said at the beginning of this video this is the ultimate irony because this reporter is talking about police reform Police reform, right when these shots rang out, probably about one or two blocks away, it sounds like. One or two blocks away. And you're talking about police reform. As if that's what we really need right now, okay? And guys, you know my stance on this. Like I said, I, I don't mind police reform, but I don't think that it's a top 10 issue in the black community. I don't think it's really that big of an issue in America. This video right here really shows where our priorities are out of line but it, because it shows that even on a day like this at george floyd square the thugs and the criminals don't give a damn and they they will continue to commit crime and cause destruction in the neighborhood that's what they'll keep doing but y'all want to go out here and talk about police reform y'all want to go out here and talk about black lives matter and that's the conversation that really needs to be had how is it that on this day, you would think that the thugs and the criminals, if you're going to be shooting, you wouldn't be shooting at George Floyd Square while you got so many people there trying to mourn for George Floyd, okay? An incident that was so tragic for the black community that inspired so many racially motivated protests. The real issues in the black community, not the police, are still out here causing problems. They don't give a damn. Number nine. You because i'm gonna be totally honest with you man i am almost totally afraid to go into any establishment indoor or outdoor where there's probably more than 15 or 20 of people that look like me because i am actually scared and i'm talking about scared for real i'm not talking about i'm not just um anything outside of the outside of a comedy club I really don't feel safe. It's never no drama in comedy club because we performers and people in there laughing and having a good time. But when people are just in an area where everybody's interacting with everybody, uh, that 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 gets to be really, really dangerous when it comes uh, to us. Um, a big a big brother slash pastor slash mentor. Uh, Reverend Yarbrough here in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, hey, Pam. Good morning. Uh, daughter was gunned down and killed yesterday when she was at Patton Park just out celebrating Easter. And some thugs, and I said it, thugs, uh, started running and shooting. Five people got shot yesterday. Five. I don't know if they have captured uh, the young man uh, who did it, but uh, she's dead. And the Yarbrough family did nothing but serve the community. I've been knowing her ever since she was a baby. I knew their parents when their parents was pregnant with her. She was just at karaoke, came out paid money, her and her mom, to come to karaoke night to support me. And she's dead. She was beautiful. Beautiful. I remember her from being from Easter programs, Sunday school activities, 
if I'm not mistaken, junior Sunday school superintendent at the old church. And it's, it's what's wrong with us? Why, why we don't know how to act? You know why? One, you know, some of the problems, some of the things that have led up to stuff like this happening in Birmingham and Chicago and West Palm Beach and Miami Gardens and uh, uh, Miami, uh, Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas, Jackson, Mississippi, St. Louis, Missouri, all over the country, East Coast, West Coast. There's no decency anymore. Nobody's being held accountable anymore. Everybody feel like they have a right to do whatever they want to do. And so now, since there's no decent they young people have trained us not to say nothing to them about anything. The way you wear your pants, the way you dress as a woman, sagging pants, bonnets, pajamas, you get all this shit. Well, well, ain't nothing wrong with everything. It just gets further and further, cross the line, cross the line, cross the line, cross the line. There's no decency anymore. They, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, there's no decency anymore. There's no correction. You get criticized for correcting something that's wrong. And so what has happened, we have been trained not to say anything because if we say something, shit, that could be our life. Shit, now, now we, could, we could get shot or killed just for saying something. So what, what are we supposed to do? Now old people have worked hard, opened up doors for us where we can have something. They can't even sit on the front porch and enjoy their retirement now because your ass sitting next door smoking weed. Oh, I hear the stories all the time. I hear older people all the time because most of my friends are older. They are scared. They done worked hard, cleaned white people's shit, put up with white people's shit where you can have something and you don't have no damn enough respect for yourself and it has starting to have an effect on other people. Me and my four kids, that's a household of five. I have a household of Five, my two sons and my two daughters. It's five of us. Two of us are victims of gun violence. How the fuck does that happen? Not from white people, not from, from racists. We're gunshot victims from the community which we serve. Number eight. Family brother Reza Islam here. I just wanted to weigh in on this Joe Biden situation just really quick, and I'm going to do something else tomorrow. But I wanted to say this: my major in college was political science. Yes, my professor, who was an alumni from UCLA, his name was Paul Floor. The first thing he told us was that voting alone is a lie. Voting alone is laughable. Voting alone is what poor people do. This is what he said. He said this is what poor people do. That's why they don't get anything passed. That's why we don't get any benefits or anything done for us. One, whoever is the president, Trump or Biden or whoever. You don't really have too many options, right? One, there has to be an agenda written down. Two, there has to be economic power put behind the agenda. Three, there has to be social pressure through social media and all of us who have social media platforms. We will not beg anymore. We're not going to allow anyone to go to the cookouts, eat chicken into our hearts, or do the dab on Ellen DeGeneres or play the saxophone to win our vote. We will force them to do what needs to be done for us. Number seven. Okay, so listen, guys. I'm at Paramount Studios. I just got through filming Dr. Phil. I don't know why you guys didn't warn me about these liberal agenda networks. So basically, the show was supposed to be about me and my son trying to find some type of resolution to figure out how we can fix our relationship. The whole show ended up about me being a black Trump supporter with conservative values, okay? Not only that, they brought on another tranny to try to tell me how to be a parent. First of all, sir, you don't even have children. You probably can't even, you, pro you, don't, you probably can't even have children, yet you wanna tell me what I need to do in regards to my child. 
Dr. Phil didn't offer any solution to our problem whatsoever. People telling me, hey, go on Dr. Phil, he gonna help. Dr. Phil didn't offer not one solution. Wanted to quiet me down, gave the stage to his tranny friend, let them speak in regards to the transgender issues and did not let me have a voice. It wasn't nothing but a setup. I'm telling y'all right now, I showed my ass, okay? So when y'all see it, y'all already know I went completely in. Son, absolutely disrespectful. Talking about, I'm gonna die alone and all of this shit. Nigga, I'm married. I mean, I got a whole husband. I got four other children. Nothing about my son's mental illness whatsoever. Everything about me. I'm the bad parent because they can't force me to believe that my son is a woman. So I'm gonna tell you this. Fuck Dr. Phil. Fuck his motherfucking wife. Fuck goddamn Paramount Studios. Fuck all you other crazy, dumbass son of a bitches that think a dick can somehow magically turn into a pussy. It's not motherfucking happening. That's the bottom line. I held it down. It was some ghetto ratchet shit, but I don't give a fuck because I'm standing on mine. At the end of the day, my son is a man. And the rest of y'all need to stand on your shit too. I don't give a fuck what label these people have by their name. Common sense is we know damn well a man cannot be a woman. Okay? If you were supposed to be a woman, you wouldn't have to go and have surgery to get titties put on your breasts. You would already be born with them. If you was a woman, you wouldn't be born with a dick. You wouldn't have to go get your dick cut off. Now, I'm going to stick to common sense, okay? Listen, man, the show going to be something else. It's the white car over there in the front. The show going to be something else. Y'all forgive me. I showed my ass. Number six. Say it's the white people I should fear, but it's my own kind doing all the killing here. Tupac was right then, and he right now. You need to stop blaming white folks. You're sick in the inside. The main ones out there making all that noise, hooting and hollering for black people, disagree with them, and watch what they do to you. Watch what they try to do. Watch what they say to you. Watch how they talk to you, black man. Just disagree with them. And watch how they talk to you. Candace Owens black. And I ain't heard a person sat down and had a healthy dialogue with this woman yet. I watched them put this woman up on the stage. And she's a black woman. But she ain't the black woman that you want to hear from. But she makes some valid points that I would like to hear someone challenge and argue with. Just the point and not the person. If what I'm saying is wrong... Educated people should be able to be emotionally strong enough to sit there and hear somebody's point. You teaching at colleges to not like people. That's not the debates that I used to see. When I grew up, a debate was about the, the content, the message. You see two people say their point of view and we see who got the most facts in it. Now, as soon as a person walks in the room, ah! You ain't gonna make it through life. If that's what you gotta do, the f is wrong with you? The sight of a person does that to you? You fried your son of a. You need to carry your ass somewhere and go get some help. You mother college kids that acting like that, that's why they probably sent Stephen H. and them to college to help brainwash y'all and let y'all know uh, that y'all not great because y'all some great mother. And how you become great is you let other people challenge the things that you're saying. You don't just sit in no damn bubble and think you're the baddest, smartest mother. Imagine that. Imagine we never got to see uh, Mike Tyson challenge himself against another person. Imagine us seeing Mike Tyson just hit the bag all quick like he was doing. But we never got to see him up against somebody else. If you think you a bad mother, you standing on what you're saying. Quit crying about who's saying. Number five. Somebody please tell black people racism not only exists in the white community, but if you're black, you can be a racist. Yeah, I don't think she's. That hasn't even dawned on her. Yeah. That's how lost she is. Man, I, man. I mean, why is it the people, the most, uh, um, the most racism I face in our days in 2021 is from black people? It's from actual liberals. Yeah. 
black black majority a, yeah. majority white liberals, but yeah, they're on I mean, the left. Yeah, I mean, as much as they try to paint uh, people on the right, yeah, Trump supporters as being racist people. Yeah, I mean, where's the video footage of just Trump supporters being racist or people on the right just being racist in general? Yeah, I mean, you see this all the time. Yeah. And when she said you'd never be white, people that actually talk like this, they actually, I might be wrong, I'm just speculating here, but I think she truly hates being a black woman. Well, I'm convinced because all yeah. she's doing is projecting. Yeah. She actually, I, 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 in my heart, I honestly believe this woman hates being black. And that's why, that's the only reason why she would say mm -hmm. what she's saying to a Latino. A lot of people say the reason why we conservatives is because we, we want to be white. That's just a... That's just ridiculous. I'm conservative <laughs> because I have different opinions. That's the only reason. It has nothing to do with the color of your skin. Yeah, I see the world differently. Now, there's yeah. no coincidence that this happened, this this recording, mm -hmm. this police uh, stop. It happened this on happened, the 23rd. It happened on the 23rd. Three days after the Micaiah, Micaiah Bryant incident. And a couple where, of days after uh, the LeBron James tweet. Yeah, so you see how the media has framed that story. You mm -hmm. saw what LeBron did. Mm -hmm. uh, putting out this false narrative that this cop's a murderer. I mean, Makai Bryant, I understand she was 16 and she's black, but mm -hmm. all those things are irrelevant. Mm -hmm. This girl is holding a knife and she's in the posturing like she's going to stab somebody. And I want to point out a lot of mainstream media cut out the point where they yeah. actually shows the knife. So they just led a lot of black people was led to believe that that cop just shot her because she was fighting another girl. Yeah. People actually believe that. People actually mm -hmm. believe that the cops was there because she called the police for mm -hmm. help. Yeah. You I can mean, actually, you have a strong case, police officers, you have a strong case against our mainstream media. They are inciting violence against police officers. It's, that, is, that is not a coincidence people are behaving this way. Yeah. Just for being pulled over. I'm glad I'm not a police officer because I'd have yanked her big ass out the car. <laughs> As soon as she said she didn't have no um no driver's license, oh you breaking law, you going to jail. I'd have took I'd have took you in, man. You lost your cool. <laughs> you gotta keep your cool, man. That's part of your police training. No, why do cops gotta be perfect? And people that's associated on coming to contact with cops, you don't have to be perfect. Yeah, you can be less than perfect. Yeah, the cop is held to this standard no one can meet. <laughs> right. But it's okay for this woman to talk to this man this and break way. cops that way. Number four. I don't know what Black Lives Matter was ever supposed to be about, okay? I really don't. I've always thought it was a fraudulent organization, and I saw it coming from a mile away, and, you know, congratulations to Breonna Taylor's mom for calling them frauds um, after her daughter's face was used to collect money. If this situation today with Micaiah Bryant, if that's how you say her name, Micaiah Bryant, the 16 year old who was in the process of trying to stab another black woman to death and got shot and killed by police officers who saved the life of the black girl who she was trying to kill, okay? She was trying to kill her. That is what you do. That is what you are trying to accomplish when you take a knife and you try to stab someone repeatedly. You are trying to commit murder, okay? This woman, young lady, if you'd like to call her, got stopped in the middle of a crime, of, in the middle of a, an attempt at murdering someone by a heroic police officer who shot and killed her before she could finish the act. In a sane society... Every single person in the world would say, thank God that officer was there to stop the crime from happening. But we don't live in a sane society because now the goal in this insane society is to make black people believe that we have to fight to protect our criminals, that we have to fight to allow our criminals to live through every situation, no matter what they are doing, even if they are trying to kill someone. OK, so Jacob Blake, who admitted that he had a knife, admitted that he had a knife is now a hero and has his name put on the back of the helmet of the New Orleans Saints because he was shot and paralyzed by police officers despite the fact that a black woman was victimized by him. Despite the, flat, the, the, the fact that a black woman had called the police on him because he was visiting her and he wasn't supposed to. Despite the fact that a black woman had alleged that he had digitally raped her, okay? He was put on the back of an NFL helmet. 
Now you have Micaiah Bryant. Again, I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right. I really don't care how I'm saying her name. I'm going to be honest with you. Now you have Micaiah Bryant, a 16-year-old who almost kills someone, and LeBron James decides to post a picture of the heroic police officer and say, you're next on his Twitter. I took a second. I thought to myself, okay, you know, before I react to this, maybe he's making a mistake because he doesn't know all the details. Because as we know, the media lies and pretends the person is a good human being. Micaiah Bryant's mother came out, even though Micaiah was a foster child. And she said, oh, she was, you know, she was about peace, something along those lines, that, that, that her daughter was really a peacemaker at the end of the day. I have never seen a peacemaker try to stab someone to death with a knife. But okay, Micaiah Bryant's mom, we'll believe you on this one. But maybe LeBron James got deluded by that quote and thought it was real and he reacted because he deleted the tweet. So I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt. But no, he has now followed up on the tweet and essentially said he only deleted it because he didn't want it to be taken out of context. And really, he's hopeful that Micaiah Bryant gets justice, that her family gets justice because he is tired of seeing black Americans killed by police officers. <laughs> let's just let's just reset that. He's OK with seeing black Americans get killed by other black Americans, because that is exactly what would have happened if a police officer didn't show up. He's just upset when a black criminal gets taken out by a police officer. What the hell are we even talking about right now in society? How do you not see how degenerate that is? How do you not understand how poisonous that is, that a man with his following is out here saying that Micaiah Bryant deserves justice for what? She got justice when she tried to kill someone and somebody intervened. That is literally the function of the police. If your husband, your loved ones, or a friend, a friend of yours, and you got into a dispute and someone charged at you with a knife, would you be hoping that that police officer didn't intervene on the basis that that person was maybe black? Oh, don't intervene, please, please. Allow me to die. Allow me to be stabbed to death because I just couldn't bear I couldn't bear the idea of you shooting this person that's trying to kill me. We are losing all morality in this society. These people, these people like LeBron James, he's a coward. He's disgusting. I honestly, I, I am now physically disgusted by LeBron James. I think he is, dis I think he is despicable. I think LeBron James should have all of his sponsorships taken from him. From putting the face of a heroic police officer and saying you're next to him and then doubling down, doubling down. Okay, and turning around and saying that this girl deserves justice. I think he's despicable. If that if, if, if the situation was reversed, if a black officer had shot a white person, okay, who was charging another white person and saved the life of that other white person that was being charged and a and somebody else had stood up and said a black police officer had put a picture of him up and said this guy, he's next basically trying to signal to the world that this person is, is, is somehow in the wrong, they would have had all of their sponsorships removed. They would have had to step down from the NBA. No questions asked. No questions asked. But LeBron James, I guess, gets to be celebrated because he's black. So he gets to experience black privilege, right? He can just say whatever the hell he wants, like he did a while ago when he said, we literally can't go outside. We're being hunted down. All of these things. He gets to add to this rhetoric. He gets to add to this, this divisiveness. And he gets to encourage black people to, again, believe that as criminals, as criminals, you still, you can kill someone and you still have the right to life. Nobody should intervene when you are trying to kill someone. That is what Micaiah Bryant was doing. She was trying to kill someone. If you are still asleep and you do not understand what is happening right now, let me tell you what's going to happen next. Police officers are going to start resigning in mass resignations. People are not going to be signing up for the police academy. Do you want to know whose neighborhoods are going to be the first that are affected by that? Do you think it's LeBron James's neighborhood? LeBron James lives in $100 million house in Bel Air, from what I've heard, in Bel Air. It's $100 million. Do you think LeBron James, when these police officers resign and they say, what is the goddamn point of me trying to protect this neighborhood, of me risking my life, of me running towards a, a scenario in which a woman is trying to violently stab someone to death, if I'm only going to be treated like I'm an animal by people like LeBron James who don't even touch their own door handles, you think he's ever done a ride along to see what police officers have to do on a day-to-day -day basis? Is that what you want? If that's what you want, if you would like for police officers to simply stop policing, raise your hand. And let me tell you something. That's what you're going to get. And let me tell you something else. That wish 
is a racist one because we all know which are the neighborhoods that need the most policing. We all know that there are minority neighborhoods where the police are called, called the most to deal with violent crimes. We all know that this scenario is going to lead to more black death. So if you're a person who goes, well, we just got new police officers, you know exactly what you are doing. I don't blame police officers right now if they want to step down. I don't blame them. I, I, personally, I would almost respect if police officers went on strike. I would respect it. You know what? This Let, let the neighborhoods turn into Gotham City. Let, let the neighborhoods, let them riot, let them loot, let them burn. If they want to murder one another, and what, what would be the purpose of a police officer wanting to hold that badge, have that badge anymore, when this is how we treat them? LeBron James is a despicable human being for this. Despicable. I have no respect for him. If you are a fan of LeBron James, if you are a person that likes basketball, you should never, you should never, ever, ever, ever go to a LeBron James game ever again. If you have the sense to understand what is wrong here, I don't care how talented he is. I don't care how many rings he has. What he is doing right now is celebrating perversity. What he is doing right now is celebrating criminality. What he is doing right now is trying to blur the lines, the very clear lines between right and wrong. What the police officer did in the Micaiah Bryant situation was right. What LeBron James tweeted about was wrong. If you cannot see that and you think that this video is an example of Candace Owens acting like an Uncle Tom, you're a lost soul and you're a degenerate. If you are watching this and you're thinking that Micaiah Bryant is a hero, that Micaiah Bryant deserves justice, then you are a degenerate. In my opinion, you are a degenerate. I don't care. I don't care if you're sitting here watching going, oh my God, but Candace, can't you see yourself? It's Micaiah Bryant's a butt. No, I can't see myself. I, I, don't, I don't take a knife and try to kill somebody. But didn't you see yourself with George? No, I don't take fentanyl. I don't do op opioids. I haven't been arrested in jail nine times. Stop telling me to see myself in someone because they have the same melanin as me. I have nothing to do with white criminals. I have nothing to do with Chinese criminals. I have nothing to do with black criminals. I am not a criminal. I am not a criminal. I do not see myself in any of these scenarios. I am an American. I am an American that wants policing, that respects police officers, and believes that criminals belong in prison. And when they are trying to kill someone, they need to be stopped by any means necessary. Thank you for paying attention to this rant. I'm so disgusted with the way that society is trending. And I am just sickened by the fact that the Democrats and the left and these athletes, these despicable athletes are playing a part in what is really just the corrosion of ethics in this society. Number three. Evan. How are you? I'm blessed and grateful. How are you? I am well. What do you got for me? Fantastic. Well, I'm an international supermodel. I'm 22 years old. And I just came out with a song. Insider wrote about it. And uh, I want millions because I think I'm responsible to handle the money. So I'm looking for a responsible man. How old are you? Um, 22 years old. And you want what? A responsible man, a man who can communicate a man who's loving and has some money. Okay. Where's your, what does your father do for a living? My father is a pastor. Okay. What does your father say about this? Well, uh, he loves me very much. Uh, no, 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 he, about, about, about your worldly wants. He wants me to marry a good man. No, no, no. I said your worldly wants. Because My you're international. Wants. Because what you said. Young lady is I'm an I'm an international supermodel and I've made this song and I want a man with millions and hey I make no judgment that's worldly and I think it's, it's kind of unusual for a pastor's daughter to not understand that that's worldly I'm not judging it I'm just saying it's worldly. Well, you see, Kevin, I come from inner poverty and I wasn't raised with much, but. Uh, after my international travels, I see what I deserve in my life. Deserve, and, do you? Uh, deserve. Tell yes. me why you Tell me why you deserve what somebody else has. I never said that. But what do you I mean? Tell me what you deserve. I deserve money because I'm intelligent. So, every intelligent person, are you a member of Mensa? What's Mensa? 
the uh, Society for Genius Levels Intellects. Oh, well, I've never heard of this. Hmm. Right. So let's just follow your line of thought. Intelligent people deserve money. Like me, I believe. No, 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 no. You said you deserve money because you're intelligent. So yes, intelligent I money. believe I can handle money. Okay. Um, what's the A most lot money of it. You, what is the most money you've ever earned? My MAC Cosmetics campaign in 2019, I was paid $20,000. Okay. Uh, and where is that money at right now? Well, I invested some of it and mm -hmm. I spent some of it. Right. So in 2019, you got $20,000 in a lump sum payment. Correct. Uh, tell me about the rate of return you've received in the last year. The rate of return. Well, I'm not... I'm not going to lie. I'm not that financially literate, but. But ma'am, now, okay. I, I get that you're, you, you, this is your moment to shine, but you're, you're, you're sounding kind of crazy. <laughs> so I'm hoping you're an actress. I'm hoping you're an actress because this isn't looking too I good. should be. Well, but I the thing is, but here's the, but here's the thing. I, 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 I'm taking this and are you 22? Yes, sir. All right. Life isn't a joke, young lady. Did I say it was? Uh, now, see, this is where we don't go. <laughs> Why? Because I'm no, sad. No, no, this is, no. Let me, let me make you real clear. This is where we don't go. I have not insulted you. And I will bid you a good night because I, I, I don't oh, do this. Oh, Kevin. No, 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 no. Don't, and don't well, goodbye this. then. I don't need you. Of course not. You need. Now, you know what? See, guys, look at what you just saw. That is a deluded woman. Number two. It ain't nothing but the poor nigga when you die wanna hang around and wanna have a seven-hour funeral. What the fuck is wrong with you niggas? Y'all should have had Floyd done had three motherfucking funerals. What no business with Reverend Al Sharpton bringing his good hair, no good motherfucking ass coming down there with that line Bible bullshit, with that Bible thumping bullshit. Then y'all want to put up all the Negro gals in their pretty dresses with their motherfucking hair done pristine. Y'all ought to be ashamed of y'all self. Niggas supposed to come to church as they are. You ain't supposed to dress up and get pretty in the house of the Lord fucking with the house of the Lord. That's why God's spirit ain't never in church with you motherfuckers. Y'all some no good heathen hypocritical motherfuckers. Now what y'all doing all that good singing in there for? What's all that singing for? You want to get up and talk for a little bit? I want to read a resolution in the Bible. Says, What's all that bullshit for? That same shit is routine. One thing I know about God, you can't put a routine on him. You can't put the Holy Spirit in no motherfucking box. That's, that did nobody get saved. Every funeral, gang-banging funeral I ever went to, the preacher go ask, who out there ain't except Jesus? Raise your hand. Nigga, I need, nigga, that's what the funeral was for, to be introduced to Jesus. Y'all ain't had now motherfucking out to call where the folk can accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Now listen, why is all y'all mad about a nigga dying and get to go to heaven? Somebody lying about some shit. Now didn't y'all say, why this motherfucker sad where George? George done got three million, thirteen million dollars. Nigga done got thirteen million dollars. That nigga would have lived ten more years, fifty more years. That nigga wouldn't have got thirteen million dollars. And and now his baby college paid for. Kanye West, them done come in and pay for the baby. Shit, man. I wouldn't give a fuck what it's supposed to be, bitch. I don't now time I'm on here. I'm trying to be funny. Get your motherfucking ass out of here, ho. Funk ass bitch asking them goddamn questions. Go stop class. I don't now time. I ain't trying to be funny. Fuck, I keep telling y'all I'm a fucking nigga, please. So listen. Kanye West get a boy, baby, college paid for. College. Now, we don't know if Kanye West gonna be living around when the girl get up and go to college, but goddamn it, they done paid for the girl college. He couldn't pay for college. That nigga down on the boulevard fucking around with a 20 by 20 dollar bill that don't look right with dope in his system so he wasn't gonna get 13 million no way at 43 44 for all every boy boy born in 73 might face 46 something so here it is the nigga get all that money now they got his name on somewhere in africa i was looking at the funeral dozing off on that boring ass bullshit and and they got the boy name they the niggas in africa somewhere they done put his name 
on the monument in Africa. Well, one thing I know about you niggas in America, y'all ain't go fly over there in Africa and see George Floyd's name on no goddamn monument. And them goddamn Africans ain't can't come to America and see Third Ward where George is Floyd from. So that's a crock of shit. Nigga, fuck you talking about God say, nigga, don't make a statue and don't carve now, nigga, name no motherfucking well. Nigga, please. So here it is. Y'all done had three motherfucking funerals for this nigga. Fuck wrong with y'all. Man, goddamn, done tote this nigga body like he Jane Brown. It, it ain't nothing but the ignorant, fool-ass nigga, when he die, want to hang around on earth. Nigga, Jane Brown stayed laid somewhere a month and a half. Aretha Franklin, funky no good bitch, had a 13-hour funeral. Hold on, baby, I'm coming. Uh, 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 God damn it. Uh, this nigga here had three funerals. This nigga here had three funerals. Then they get the nigga, uh, bring him down here, and what Reverend Al Sharpton here for? What the fuck? How can Reverend Al Sharpton eulogize everybody? And where do he preach it where he can get up and put a robe on? You can't find now motherfucking church sharp to preach it on Sunday. Where he get a robe like that, nigga, to preach from? And then he coming now with the black matching leather motherfucking gloves in the middle of that motherfucking Houston heat. Nigga, everybody know in the middle of goddamn June, nigga, and his hair was done good. That nigga, last time I saw that nigga hair on MSNBC, it wasn't looking like how he was looking right there. Is this going to stop blacks from killing black? Niggas been dying yesterday. Niggas died two days ago. Niggas been dying now. I ain't trying to stop blacks from killing blacks, motherfucker. I ain't God. Yeah, if you want blacks to stop killing black, tell God to take the curse off of us that he put on us according to the Bible. But back to what I was saying, matter of fact, get your motherfucking ass out of here. Lucky B, the real fuck you talking about. So listen. The nigga family ain't nowhere in the world. Now they finna get the lawsuit money. Everybody finna be straight in the George Floyd family. Even the no good rod money. Everybody finna get money in the George Floyd family. So why why y'all mad, black people? The man made a sacrifice. Y'all finna work on the job all y'all life. The man, the best, some of y'all need to get killed by the police. So you can set your family straight. A lot of you niggas go die and y'all ain't go near about to get what George Floyd family done got. You funny, but one, all comedians are sick in the mind. You got to be sick to be a comedian to make this shit funny and laughing. But back to what I was saying. Best thing the police can do is kill niggas like Floyd. Kill niggas because them niggas go get some money. Them niggas go get some money and they go be able to take care of their family. Other than that, nigga can't take care of their family and niggas is dying with no insurance policy. So if nothing else, God damn it, that lawsuit money from the police department, everybody got money. Mike Brown family got money. Yeah, they go get you some money. Why they don't mind killing him up on that? The police department done paid out almost a billion motherfucking dollars. God damn me and police shooting. They got plenty of goddamn money. So listen, they don't mind killing a few of you niggas. Wait, you, you niggas cost way more having to lock you up. Keeping you niggas locked up away for 20, 30 years. Shit, all they doing is recouping the money. The boy spent a lot of time in the penitentiary. Shit. So here it is. The boy baby is set for life, and now she get to see her daddy as a hero. Most niggas' kids won't ever get to see them as a hero. If a nigga live long... Uh, if a nigga live alone, he don't, ain't, every, every black nigga ain't no hero. Nigga like Floyd wouldn't have been no hero to his daughter. Broke as a nigga is. Ain't no way in the world broken, doing bad as you niggas is. Y'all heroes to y'all kids. This is the best way that nigga daughter can forever see my daddy as a hero. For that then, man, that nigga. For then, they will say your daddy sorry. Y'all ain't no telling what that nigga baby mama done said all by this motherfucking ass before he got killed. Now everybody got good shit to say about him. Shit, man, y'all not me. Don't nobody care nothing about no nigga like Floyd till he get killed by the police. Just ask the niggas in Floyd's situation. That's why everybody can relate to the nigga. Say, but listen to me, right? So here it is. Everybody mad. Man, Floyd got millions of dollars. Boy, is an instant millionaire. Nigga, i die today if I can be an instant millionaire. Nigga, if I can die right now today and my kids got all that goddamn money, that's what a nigga living for, ain't eh? Ain't a nigga living, working hard on them jobs so you can set something for your children's children's children. If the police can put a knee in my neck right now, nigga, and need a life out of me, and my mama go be set, my kids go be set, nigga, I ain't got to work hard no more. So then here go the beauty of it, right? I get to leave Earth. 
Nigga, earth is so nasty and ugly. It's a mean world. It's pain on earth. Nigga, now what y'all tell me about heaven? Now, all my life, y'all told me that the streets in heaven was gold. They say the gates is pearly, nigga. And then they said it's going to be milk and honey flowing with river. Nigga, I'm trying to have it. Nigga, who don't want to lead? I'm going to get to lead a family rich. Nigga, please. I get to lead a family with millions of dollars, something I wasn't going to ever do in my lifetime. That nigga family fit to get down there. A hundred million. They already got 13 million. They broke the GoFundMe record. Boy, we ain't never seen a nigga break the GoFundMe record. God damn. Ooh, nigga, he broke records. God Number one. If you've seen the picture, the picture is about something that a lot of black men have to go through. And that's being called a term called a self-hater. Self-hater is one of the biggest ones that's being used. And as you saw that picture, that is the picture of an average everyday American black woman. Yep, the black female walks around looking like it's Halloween every damn day. One of these Halloweens, I'm expecting that black women will just go looking normal as ho for Halloween since Halloween's every day for them. Now they get mad when I bring out this as a fact, but it is a fact. If you look at the average black woman, she looks like a gelfling. She doesn't look like a real person. She looks like a mannequin. But that's neither here nor there. The term self-hater, I'd like to discuss. There are two words in the, in the phrase self-hater. Self and hater. Let's deal with the latter first. Hater. Hater comes from hate. Hate to have disdain, extreme dislike for something or someone or even some place. Hate. Hater. Hater is more of a noun. Hate is a verb. Hater is the person that's doing the hating. Black women like to say they've been hated on or hating. You don't get it. Because they say if somebody doesn't like their photo online, they're just hating them. If somebody thinks that it's wrong for them to beat their kids in public, then you're just hating on me. This word hate has become pervasive amongst the black community. It just means that if I do some crazy shit and you say something about it, that means that you're a hater. It's a shaming tactic. And that's where you get self-hater from. Self, self pertaining to one's self, one's own being. Put the two words that black women are using together, self, hatred of one's self, hatred of oneself, self-hater. You mean to tell me your dumb asses haven't figured out that a person's not a self-hater because he doesn't find you attractive? I'm not talking to black women right now. I'm talking to the rest of the world and black men. The rest of the world, the reason I'm doing this video is because I want you to witness the dysfunction that black men raise, are raised up in. They're raised up in a house with a woman that believes that if you do not find them attractive for any reason, then that means you hate yourself. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. It's pretty stupid. Doesn't make sense. The word dictates that you would have to find yourself unattractive. Not then. But they're not worried about logic. They're just worried about shaming you. And a group of people who felt like they were attractive in the first place, guess what they wouldn't have to do? Shame men into liking them. But that's exactly the position where black women have found themselves, that they have to shame people into liking them. They've even gone so far as to bringing up an Oedipus Rex syndrome. For those who don't know, look it up, nigga. Oedipus Rex, they have got it to where they will say things like, yo mama is black. Meaning you should find them sexually attractive because you have, of course, found your mother sexually attractive. They never put into place that, well, your mom slept with your dad. They never put into place that, well, your mom's probably old. They never put into place that your mom's your mom. You think about it this way. If a black man dates outside of his race, they will say he's a self-hater. If a black woman dates outside of her race, they will throw her a tick of tape parade. Why is this? You never really hear the term coon thrown towards a black woman's race. You never hear the term self-hater towards a black woman who dates outside of her race. Why? But every time a black man does it, he will inevitably be thrown that term. Black women have actually convinced black men that if they don't find them attractive, that they somehow hate themselves. Well, let me point something out to you. By that logic, if I don't find other men attractive, then I hate myself. Um, you see the pictures of those two crazy ass women? And if you did, there it is again. 
Black women walk out their houses like this every day. Every day you can find a black woman that looks like one of these two people. Or you can play Mortal Kombat and just choose Melina. Any way it goes, you will get one of these two chicks. The point is, they walk out of their house looking like this and you can't find it unattractive because if you do, then you hate yourself. If you won't date a woman with kids, you are a self-hater, I guess because you used to be a kid before. This idea that you have to date a woman that's black because you're black, as I said, then you should date a man because you're a man. And if you won't date a man, then you're a self-hater. Maybe if you won't date someone at your job, then you're a self-hater because you hate yourself because you work at this job, but you refuse to date someone at this job. Maybe if you won't date someone that drives the same kind of car as you. Maybe if you won't date someone that, has the that likes the same color as you. So black women, you need to understand, they're a group of men that just hate you, that just don't want to have anything to do with you. They're not bothered by you. They just want you away from them. That doesn't make them a self-hater. That actually makes them have standards. Just like you have standards when you won't date a guy that's under six foot or you won't date a guy that's dark or you won't date a guy that's old. Whatever standards you have, we as men have to accept it. Yet you, you get to shame us into liking you by calling us self-hater amongst others. Next time you see a black man that hates himself, remember, hopefully he's stabbing himself, throwing himself off a cliff or yelling to the mountaintops that he sucks. Find a new word. I'm Tommy Sotomayor. I ain't doing this shit again.